This video is the first in the series in adding a second activity to an Android app that already has an activity in an Android manifest. In this video, we're going to make a new layout that looks something like this. It won't have everything populated here, but we're going to have space for an image view, then we're going to have two buttons, and then a grid view that follows. So to start, I'm going to open up Android Studio. I am going to go to my project and I am going to look for where the layouts are stored. So I go to res and then layout. The full path here is app, source, main, res, and then layout. You see I already have a layout here for my first activity. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say new and I'm going to say activity and I'll just say a blank activity in this case. Activity name, uh, what we're what we're basically emulating here is the search by color feature on plantplaces.com mobile for Android. Again, we're not going to do the back end of it. We just want to set up the layout. So I'm going to call this color capture activity. And the layout, sure, we'll leave it at activity color capture. The package name is fine. I typically am going to want to put all of my activities in the same package. So off screen here slightly, I'm going to choose finish. And again, our first concern is the layout, the activity we will tackle in a different video. Okay, uh, go ahead and add these to our uh, Git so that I can push this up to GitHub. Now, activity color capture, I click on this, and we are going to see it actually appears over on the right side. Okay, click on the right side. And it brings us to design view. It uh, looks a little big right now. I'm going to minimize this a little bit. And the first thing we see is we have a text view, and eh, we don't really need that. I'm going to just highlight and delete. Secondly, the relative layout, eh, well, I would rather this be a linear layout. So what I might do, I might have to do a little trickiness though. I'm gonna take the linear layout, and we're gonna try and drag it right up here. Uh, now you see I have a linear layout within a relative layout. I'll need to do a little bit of magic to get this to work. Uh, I'm going to make the linear layout the root of this file, and I'm going to remove the relative layout. Okay, Relative layout's an excellent layout, it's just, uh, in this case, I want a linear layout. Uh, okay, so I need to grab a couple things here, XMLNS, Android, uh, tools, layout width, we already have it looks like, so I'll just grab these two. Uh, actually, I'll tell you what, I can go ahead and grab the padding as well, and control C and I'll just paste those properties down here. Uh, I just need to re remove my duplicate entries, the layout width and the layout height. Okay, now we're almost there. I want to take away this root relative layout so that now all I have left over is a linear layout. Maybe there's a faster way to do this. If you know, uh, certainly say so in the comments. I will, let's see, uh, looks like I have put a couple things close to each other here. Let me make that look a little bit better. Okay. Uh, I will save and I'm going to go back to design and make sure it looks good. Okay. Now it's correct. It's linear layout. Uh, one trick though is it's it, well, vertical. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay. So I'm going to reduce my little YZWIG editor here. And the first thing I'm going to put in my linear layout is an image view. And that image view is going to show whatever image we take either with the camera or selecting from the gallery. And our goal here in a future video is to show how to invoke the image gallery with an implicit intent. That's, that's where we're going eventually. So I'm going to look for the image view, and I find it right here under widgets. Now, this is where a relative layout might work a little bit better because in this case, I'm giving the image view a fixed dimension, which generally is not a good idea. Uh, but uh, you see, we just kind of want to show a thumbnail of whatever was selected. So we'll roughly center it here and, uh, you know, we're kind of eyeballing it here, but that's about what we're going to want to show a thumbnail of the selected image, just as I have right here. And that, again, that's all we want is a thumbnail. Okay, now the next trick is how do we get these two buttons to sit next to each other in a friendly manner where they're relatively uh, centered? What we need to do is we need to nest a layout, nest the button, nest the layout within another layout. This time I'm going to pick the linear layout and we'll just drop it uh, right under the image view. 
and you see that now we have the image view up top and the linear layout inside. Now I'm going to take one button and drag that button into the linear layout. And I'm going to take a second button and drag the second button into the linear layout. So now we have two buttons next to each other. Now, I want to stop before I go much further because we know the thing we need to do as soon as we drop something onto the uh, onto the layout is we want to give it an ID because button one, button two is not going to make any sense to us when we're programming against this. So we'll call this one BTN Image Gallery and I'll call the other one BTN Take Photo. Okay, and we'll probably want to make some on-click events for this eventually. Now the next thing is you notice that they're sitting right next to each other. In a linear layout, one thing we want to give it, uh, we want to give each of our components is a weight. I'm going to give the first button a weight of 1. And notice what happens when I give it a weight of 1. It consumes a lot of space on the screen. I click on the other button, and we're going to give that a weight of 1 also. Now what Android's going to do under the covers is, is it's going to sum up the weight of both of these buttons, and then it's going to make a fraction out of it. So the sum of the weights is 2. This button has a weight of 1. 1 over 2 means take up half the screen. This button also has a weight of 1. 1 over 2 means take up the other half of the screen. If I were to give one of the buttons a different weight, if I were to give it a weight of 2, then our fraction would be 1 third and 2 thirds. And it's going to do a, it's going to do a little more math based on the minimum size of the button and the text in the button. But you see now the button on the right takes up a little bit more space than it did when it was equally weighted uh, with the first. Okay, so I adjust back to one. Whoops, sorry. Uh, I adjust, I was clicking on the wrong thing. I adjust this guy back to one, and we see that they'll be back to roughly equal. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to change the text that appears on the button. So I'm going to resize a little bit here. And I'm going to go to text for the first button. And remember what we're trying to make this look like, like this. Take new photo and open existing image. So I click on the ellipsis. And I'm going to say new resource, new string value. And this is going to put it in strings XML for better internationalization. LBL, take new photo. This is a kind of like a constant value. We don't want to have any spaces in the name but the value is what the user will actually see. So the value, take, new, photo. And if we want to support a different language, all we have to do is make a new uh, strings.xml file for that language. Strings.xml is where, uh, where this text is going to go. And we would simply make another translation for the value, but the name would stay the same. And that's how internationalization works. So I choose OK. Take new photo, and now the next button, I do the same thing. Click the ellipsis, new resource, new string value, and this one we're going to say LBL open existing image, and resource value open existing image. And I'm going to choose OK. And open existing image, you see now uh, the two buttons have the correct labels. I'm going to squeeze up this uh, linear layout just a bit to try to have it so it just consumes the space for both of those buttons because what we really want to show the user is the grid of results. In other words, in the live plant places, what you can do is take a new photo or open an existing image. It will show the photo in the thumbnail view here, and then it will show you the top 16 colors in a grid view down below. So that grid view is what we want to have take up most of the space that's left over. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the grid view. And here's the grid view. I'm going to take the grid view. I'm going to drop it down next. OK. And now what we need to do is we need to give it a number of columns. So as we scroll down, Num columns. Well, remember, I'm showing the top 16 colors, so 4x4 four four is ideal. We won't specify the number of rows. We want it to overflow. In other words, if I have four items, it's going to be one row. Five items, that's going to put me on the second row. Uh, eight items, still on the second row. Nine items, the third row. 
So num columns, uh, I'm simply going to say four. And now you see it's overflowing as needed, and now it's our job to populate this with information. Nonetheless, at this point, we have a layout that when we program against it, it's going to have an image view up top, two buttons, and then a grid with 16. Uh, we won't completely finish that whole activity, but we will start it enough to see what we need to do to add an activity to our application uh, and also what we need to do to open the grid view. So stay tuned. Several more recordings to come. Thank you.